you have undoubtedly come across a need to do complex um, support material or a complex mesh or complex ribbing, whatever you want to call this, infill perhaps. And uh, this is applicable towards injection molding and perhaps 3D printing. So if you need to create a structure such as this, um, I have this part available for download on GrabCAD, but I want to show you how to do a simpler method than what I've done here. So here I have a more simple version. All I've really done is make the shell of an example tape holder. I've done an extrude. I've cut out the two sizes. I've done a surface revolve, thickened it, and then intersected it, removed that geometry. And then I've widened that gap just a little bit. And I've shelled out the bottom and added some finishing touches. So I want to add some complex uh, support material inside of that shell, right? Control 7. And what I'm going to do is uh, first off create a plane. I need to have a plane that runs through the middle of where I want to have my um, support material. So this face is where I want to stop my support material. And you know this ending surface around here is where I want to stop my support material. So it has to run in between those two surfaces. Plane, I'm going to uh, Features, Create Geometry, Plane, and we'll go, yeah, 0.375 inches down. You can see this plane goes in between those two faces. So we've got that worked out. Um, sketch, and as we sketch on this plane, I will hide it. I want to create a visual boundary. This You don't have to do this, but it's helpful to visualize where I want to have my mesh contained. Uh, so we'll convert entities, control A, you can see that uh, boundary. I'm going to check the four construction box and it's important to do that. So we'll get normal to our sketch with uh, control 8. In fact, I might do the other side. And I'm going to, you can do this with squares, rectangles, maybe circles, whatever you want to. I'm going to choose hexagons. And I'm going to create a hexagonal array. Uh, we're going to make these horizontal and horizontal. We'll select these two and make them equal um, for spacing and orientation. I'm going to create a center line and we're going to make this center line perpendicular. And in fact, and before I do this, I'm going to go to Tools, Create an Equation, and we're going to call this Wall Width. I'm going to set this to 0 0.075. Okay, now, in fact, I'll make a, another equation and we'll call that hex size. We're going to call this 0.5. And now I can update my hexagon mesh simply by typing in two numbers instead of going through sketches. Uh, so I'm make this 0 0.075, or actually I just created my wall width, so global variables, wall width, All right? And then I'm going to go from here to here, we're going to say equals global variables, hex size, and there we go. This is going to be uh, merged here, and now that I've created these uh, uh, hexagons, I'm going to say a linear sketch pattern, and I'm going to choose the outside of each hexagon. That sign kind of gets in the way. <laughs> and let's do a linear pattern. I'm going to space this to be, let's say, one inch in the other direction. And this is why it's nice to have a visual boundary of where you want to contain your mesh because now I can simply add features until I pass the boundary. Um, you don't have to be exact with your spacing. I'm not exact, this isn't the exact distance, but it's enough to know how many features I'm working with. So don't worry about getting the exact spacing number, just get darn close or go far past. Uh, in the y-axis, I'm gonna add a, another feature, and we're gonna make this, uh, again, you don't have to be exact, but I'm gonna say roughly 0.5 plus my wall thickness, and we're going to go far past. If you plan on 
varying your hex size and wall thickness a lot, especially if you're going to go smaller. Add a lot more features than what you've seen me add. Go far past your boundary. But this is good for how I'm working. Now uh, I need to add a few wall thicknesses to fully constrain the sketch. So we're going to say equals whole variables wall width. And we'll do it again over here. Equal whole variable wall width. And we'll do it over here. Equal global variable wall width. Okay. Now we're going to add in a rectangle. Of course, I had that little micro line there. Uh, and just for consistency, I'm going to space this consistent with wall width. Equals global variable wall width. Equal global variable wall width. equal global variable wall width. Okay. Now that we're done there, I am going to uh, get out of the sketch. Before I do, I want to show you visually the sketch is running in between the two surfaces that I want to constrain um, my support mesh. If my sketch was somewhere up here, the intersect will not work. Okay, that's really important, so make sure your sketch is in between the two faces that you want to constrain. Uh, so we're going to exit the sketch. Now on the front plane, I'll create another sketch. Um, I'm going to convert my entities here, here, here. You know, I'm basically clicking on the faces that I want to constrain my sketch within. Now I want to make sure that my sketch here comes past the sketch that I'm going to generate my support mesh with. So I'm going to extend this out here and I'm going to extend this with another line out here and we're going to call this collinear and we're going to call this uh, tangent and if you want to you can even, uh, I guess you can't, <laughs> I'm going to put a point uh, I guess you can't. Well, you can make this as long as you want. So we're going to say two inches here and two inches here. Again, if you're going to do a lot of variations to the, your hexagon or whatever size, uh, make this very long. Uh, so with this being done, we're going to go to surfaces. We're going to extrude surface. We're going to extrude from the mid plane. And again, if you're going to do a lot of variation, make this very large. Um, I'm comfortable doing it with something like, oh, let's go with four inches. Now, front plane, sketch. I'm going to do the same thing, convert entities. And we're going to start here, 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 here and here, here, okay, and we're going to go here, and we're going to go here. We're going to set these to be equal. We're going to do a dimension of, let's go to two inches. So we're definitely going past the outer limit of the sketch that we see here. And we'll exit the sketch with this highlighted surfaces. Extrude the surface. Again, we're going to go with something like a mid-plane surface. And we definitely go past our extrusion. That's what we want. Now, features. Extrude. I'm going to choose this sketch. Of course, our contour is all wrong, so we're going to clear. And uh, it seems to recognize the correct contour now. Uh, I'm going to go up to surface and we'll choose this surface, right? So we stop at the surface we've just created. Direction 2, up to surface here. And there we have our mesh generated. So I'm going to hide and hide. 
Of course, we don't want mesh where the tape is going to go into. Um, and we don't want mesh on the outside like we're seeing. So now we're going to do a simple intersect. Uh, oh, but I've made one mistake. Let's uh, go back into our extrusion and uncheck the merge result box, right? Uncheck that. Now we will intersect and we'll choose both of our bodies with everything selected. Uh, might as well. Uh, do we need to? I don't think we need to, to choose that body, but uh, we're going to click on the intersect button. This may, depending on what your mesh is, this could take a very long time. Just let it do its thing. It'll work, but this will take a minute to, to figure out for SolidWorks. Okay, um, so with this done now, and I had my mesh set to, or my um, intersect set to create both, so check that option if you haven't. And uh, I'm going to click on what I want to remove. And you can see I can remove my mesh uh, from just about anywhere. So I'll move that. I'm going to uh, remove anything from the front, looks like it's been removed. I've got the middle of my boss. I want to remove the mesh from there. And everything else I want to keep. And making sure, yep, that's how I want it. We'll click the box and it will uh, produce a solid. Notice I have merge result checked under here, right? We want that. So now we're going to merge this body. Okay. Uh, now we have produced a mesh quickly and easily, even though it was relatively complex. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.